Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 2.19 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, and it is the same as problem 2.18 as it appears in the second edition of the book. Now, this is a very, very important problem that you should 100% solve because here we will show that the expression a times e i k x plus b times e minus i k x and the expression c times cosine of kx plus d sine of kx and also f cosine of kx plus alpha and also g sine of kx plus beta are all equivalent. Now, I don't know about you, but at least when I did my undergraduate course in quantum mechanics, uh, this is my first course, um, I had, this was confusing to me at one point. I remember I was in a test and I wasn't really sure, I didn't really know when I should choose cosine or, or e when I was solving the Schrodinger equation. Because whenever we have a potential that is zero, we have several ways of solving the equation. We can use these exponentials or we can go for cosines. Um, usually it is more comfortable to use the exponential, right, e to the i k x um, as a traveling wave whenever we are dealing with three particles and it is better to use cosines or sines whenever we are dealing with standing waves because it's going to be easier um, to think of exactly the border conditions and things like that. Um, but the exponential is better in terms of traveling because we have already dealt with the case of traveling waves in previous courses. So that's why we choose that. However, they are equivalent. You could choose any and still get to the same results. Uh, it's simply that one is easier or harder than the other. So let's now prove that they are indeed the same. So let's begin with the expression a e i k x plus b e minus i k x. Okay, um, I didn't know that this was so large. Wait, <laughs> okay. Um, and we want to show that this is the same as c cosine kx plus d sine kx. So to do that, let's write out these exponentials using Euler's formula. Now, as a quick reminder, just in case you may have forgotten, Euler's formula, so Euler's formula says that e to the i theta, this is cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is incredibly important. You cannot ever, ever, ever forget about it, okay? So let's use that here. Instead of theta, we have kx. So we have a times cosine of kx plus a times i sine of kx. And then we have the same for b. So b cosine of kx because it is cosine of minus kx, but cosine is an even function. So cosine of kx, or actually minus kx, is the same as cosine of kx, okay? It is also important to know um, that cosine is even and that sine is odd, because now we have sine of minus kx, which is the same as minus sine of kx. So minus i b sine of kx. So now let's put everything together. So let's put everything together. So we get, um, let's factor the cosines. So cosine of kx times a plus b, and then factoring out sine, we get sine of kx times, and then we have a i minus i b. And there we go. If we define c as a plus b, and d as a i minus i b, then we can easily go from the exponential form to the cosine and sine form. That easy. So this is the first result. Now you might be wondering, well, why does this have i and this too? Um, it, don't worry, what matters is that our wave function has to be real. Um, so basically, psi has to be the same as psi conjugate. It doesn't matter if there's an i in there somewhere as long as it is real in the end, right? Um, so don't worry. It's like having this i up there doesn't mean that your wave function isn't real. 
Okay. Um, now, what do we have? Well, let's go for the next case. So the next case is f cosine of kx plus alpha. So we want to now compare this with f cosine kx plus alpha. Now, our initial, or at least what we are starting off with, is this exponential. So we could try and turn this into cosine kx. But even if we did so, this is cosine kx plus alpha. So we can't really turn this into a cosine. But if we turn the cosine into an exponential, then it would be a, a lot, a lot easier to, uh, to determine it. So what we're going to do is something based on Euler's formula. We're going to write cosine in terms of the exponential. So if we take this same thing, but this time we write it as e to the minus i theta. You might be familiar with this. I'm just showing you in case you didn't know. This would be cosine theta because cosine is even minus i sine theta. So now we can, if you want to find what is the cosine in terms of exponential, we can add these two together because then the signs will cancel out and we get that cosine of theta is going to be two times e, uh, wait, sorry, two times cosine, sorry, the other way around, two times cosine is going to be e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. So cosine of theta is simply e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta divided by two. So that's what we want to do, except that this time theta is kx plus alpha. So we have f, right, f times cosine of kx plus alpha. And now let's write cosine the way we just saw. So we get f times e to the i kx plus alpha plus e to the minus i kx plus alpha divided by 2. So we can now write this as f over 2 times e to the i alpha, right? We can simply um, multiply and separate the exponential times e to the i kx. And now we can take the second part, which is f over 2, but e to the minus i alpha times e to the minus i kx. And notice that this has the same form of a constant, right? Because this alpha here is simply a constant. It's this phase. Um, so we can write, if we choose, a is equal to f over 2 e i alpha and b equal to f over 2 e minus i alpha, we can easily go from this form to what we had before, right? And we would have something a e i k x, b e to the minus i k x. Um, so that is very, very nice. However, that is not really what is required of us because what they are asking us to do is to write f and alpha in terms of a and b. And what we have here is a and b in terms of f and alpha. So basically, we need to find some way of turning this around. So how can we do it? Well, there's several things to try. So for example, we can get rid of these exponentials if we take the absolute values or, or the modulus. For example, in this first equation, the modulus, we get a squared, the modulus squared, is going to be the same as the modulus squared of this. f is a constant, so f squared over 4, but this thing right here is going to be, has modulus 1, so it goes away. And similarly for b, we get um, modulus of b squared. This is, and let's see, um, f squared over 4, the same. So now what we can do to find f in terms of a and b, we can simply add these two together. So a squared plus b squared, this is simply f squared over 2 because we add f squared over 4 and f squared over 4 together. So from here we can find f if we take the derivative, <coughs> sorry, not the derivative, the square root. Um, f, 
this is going to be two times, uh, no, sorry, it is square root of two times a squared plus b squared, right? However, notice that the modulus of both are the same. It is exactly the same. Thus, what we can do here is just write either instead of modulus of b, plug in the modulus of a, or do it the other way around. It doesn't matter. Let's do it in terms of a. So we get square root of 2 times 2 times the modulus of a squared. So we take the square root and we get 2 modulus of a. So that is f. We found f in terms of a. Now, what about the angle? Well, now what we want to eliminate is f. We want to get rid of f so that we can find the angle itself. So one way to do it is to take one of these equations and divide it by the other. For example, if we take this equation and we divide it by this, the f over 2 is going to go away. So we get a over b. This is equal to e to the i alpha divided by e to the minus i alpha, which is another i alpha. Okay, but now we have this expression. How can we go forward? Well, let's try using Euler's formula again. So let's write this as cosine of 2 alpha plus i sine of 2 alpha. And now it might look a little bit hard to continue, but notice that if we take the real part of this, we get cosine of 2 alpha. And if we take, uh, sorry, uh, I didn't write it here. So if we take the real part of a over b, we get cosine of 2 alpha. And if we take the imaginary part of a over b, we, take, we get sine of 2 alpha. So this now gives us a way to determine alpha in, in terms of a and b. Because how do we relate sine and cosine? Well, we can use, well, many things, but I would say the best way is to take the tangent. So the tangent of 2 alpha is sine of 2 alpha divided by cosine of 2 alpha. So what is sine? Sine is the imaginary part of a over b and uh, the cosine is the real part of a over b and there we go this is tangent of 2 alpha but we need alpha so now alpha is going to be 2 times the inverse tangent of the imaginary part of a over b divided by the real part of a over b. And there we go. We now have a formula for alpha in terms of a and b and a formula for f right here. So we have what we wanted. Now we can move on to the last part which asks us to do the same but for g sine of kx plus beta. Now this is going to be, you can either do this by using the exact same method Right? So you say um, g times sine of kx plus beta, and then you use Euler's formula, but instead of cosine, you eliminate sine so that you find sine of theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. And with that, uh, you do exactly the same that we just did. However, there is something much easier because you must recall we can go from cosine to sine. So for example, if we had g cosine of kx plus alpha, which is basically the same as before, except that now I called f g because it's simply a constant. It does, you can name it whatever you want. So some constant times cosine, which is what we had before. And we now do the following, but recall that the sine and cosine are basically the same, except that one is shifted with respect to the other. So we can write this as g times sine of kx plus alpha minus 
pi over 2. And now let's just, in case you're not sure what I meant, let's just prove that, that this is true. So sine of, and I'm going to write it like this, sine of kx plus alpha minus pi over 2. Well, what do we do when we have a sum inside of a sine? We can separate it as sine of kx plus alpha times cosine of pi over 2, and then we get minus, but there's another minus here, so keep that in mind. So we get sine of minus pi over 2, which we can take out because the sine is an odd function, and then cosine of kx plus alpha. Okay, so this entire thing here is 0 because cosine of pi over 2 is 0. This is 1. So as we can see, this is indeed correct. Sine of kx plus alpha minus pi over 2 is indeed cosine of kx plus alpha. Okay, so what was the point of this? Why, why am I doing this? Well, because if we have a cosine of kx plus alpha, we can write it in terms of sine. And if we say beta is alpha minus pi over 2, well, there we go. We just solve this problem, right? We can write sine, basically, these two expressions are exactly the same if beta is alpha minus pi over 2, right? We can go from sine to cosine easily, and the constant in front is the same. So what am I saying with this? I'm saying that g is equal to f, right? If we have g sine of kx plus beta, and we have f cosine of kx plus alpha, then g is simply equal to f, which as we saw is two absolute value of a or b, it's the same. And we know that beta is going to be alpha minus pi over two. And we know that alpha is, I think it was inverse tangent of two times, no, it was two times the, okay, I'm gonna have to check. <laughs> Yeah, it was two times the inverse tangent, sorry. So two times inverse tangent of the imaginary part of A over B divided by the real part of A over B and all of this minus pi over two. So there we go. That's how we go uh, from each one of these expressions to the other. If you have, um, if you wanna go from A E I K X plus B E minus I K X to the cosine and sine expression, you can use this for C and D. If you wanna go from the exponentials to only cosine and that shift, you can use, um, there we go, there's F and here's the angle. And if you wanna go to sine, then here you have G and here you have the angle. So there you, there you go. The most important thing is that you know that you can go from one to the other and you have to know how you do that. So I hope this was useful to you. Um, if it was, please, you know, make sure to leave a like on the comment, <laughs> leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out a lot. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.